So again, I say to you this week that we are on a spiritual battlefield, aren't we? And so again, this week, I want to open up today's message by taking a look at something that Peter, that he wrote in second Peter and the first chapter of second Peter to where in our recent sermons, we have been taking a look at the fifth verse in last week's message. We took a look at what Peter said in the sixth verse. In both of those verses, we are seeing where Peter wrote that believers that we should always be growing in our faith. We should not be stagnant in our faith. We should continue to grow in our faith. We have seen that we should add virtue to our faith. We have seen that we should add knowledge to our faith. We have seen that we should add self-control to our faith. Again, we should do these things if we desire to overcome if we desire again to not be defeated by sin. So as we continue in this series of sermons this week, we'll again take a look at Peter there in second Peter, the first chapter and the sixth verse where Peter, he encourages believers again to add to their faith, something else. We'll see there in the sixth verse that Peter, he tells believers to add perseverance to our faith. We are to, again, listen to this today. We are to add perseverance to our faith. Perseverance, that is the continued effort to achieve something despite difficulties, despite failure, despite opposition. Perseverance, in other words, is pushing forward. It is being able to endure. It is being steadfast in whatever it is that you may be dealing with in whatever it is that you may be going through. Perseverance. That is our key word for today. And again, we should certainly look to persevere on this journey. The reason why is because while life is filled with its good days, we know something else to be true about life. We know that, again, we are on a spiritual battlefield, aren't we? And on this battlefield, I tell you today that we face an adversary, not just any kind of adversary. You know, some adversaries, when you have beaten them enough times, they will give up, won't they? But this adversary, he's not like any old kind of adversary. The adversary that, that you and I are against today, he doesn't believe in letting up. Our adversary, even when he loses, he believes that he is winning. And so our adversary will continue on the attack. Our adversary we face today, he is growing more and more desperate to defeat us in his attacks. Our adversary, he lies. Our adversary, he schemes, doesn't he? He lies and he schemes with flattering words again in desperation to make us doubt what we know and what we believe in our hearts. When he is unable to make us doubt what we believe in our hearts, when he is unable to, to make us doubt the truth, our adversary, again, he grows more desperate. And in his desperation, he moves to attack our emotions. That's what we saw in last week's message, didn't we? Those attacks, they are done in order to weaken us. They are done in order so that he can take the wheel, so that he can take control of us. And as I said last week, run us into a ditch or into a wall. Again, our adversary wants to wreck our soul. Do you want your soul to be wrecked today? I hope not. Now, many have succumbed to such attacks. And because they have succumbed to such attacks, they are now vessels of his. But again, I say to you today, we must not succumb to the attacks of our adversary. Now, when we don't succumb to the attacks on the truth or on our mental or our emotional, our enemy, he does not give up. Our enemy, he moves to his next attack. 
Our enemy, he will afflict us with great afflictions. I think of the testing of Job through all the afflictions that he suffered in his life, all the afflictions that, that he had to endure. Recently in our Sunday school lessons, we have been taking a look at Naomi. We have been taking a look at Ruth, haven't we? And we have seen how they had the battle famine. We have seen how they lost loved ones. We have seen where they needed to persevere on their journey. I think of one of my favorites that we find in scripture. I haven't preached about him in a while. I got to get back to him one day. I think about Joseph. Joseph, he was a man that was betrayed by his own flesh and blood. He was betrayed by his own brothers and he was left to be sold into slavery. Elijah, he was another. He was a very powerful prophet, a very strong man of faith. But no matter how strong in faith he was, he was a man that suffered from loneliness. All because of Ahab and Jezebel, their vicious attacks against the prophets of the Lord. Those, they were all people that, again, we find in scripture who were up against it in their life. They found themselves up against the wall in the afflictions, the afflictions that, again, they had to endure. They had to, again, find a means to persevere or else. If, if they did not find the means to persevere, they would have fallen on the battlefield. They would have fallen to defeat on the battlefield. They would have been consumed on the battlefield. What do you do today when you are up against the wall on the battlefield? What do you do today when the going gets tough? So today here in my message, I want to focus on David. I want to focus on King David here in the 40th Psalm. David, he was another one who had to persevere in his life or else. Again, we'll see there in my key verses for today, there in the first and the second verse, we'll see where David, he was singing praises. He was singing about how he was once in a horrible pit of miry clay. Now, that horrible pit of Mary Clay that David, that he was singing praises about, it, I want you to understand, was a metaphor about all that David had seen and about all that he had gone through in his life, okay? Let's not take that horrible pit as him literally being in a very, very deep pit of Mary Clay, okay? So this horrible pit, being a metaphor about all that David had went through, all that he had seen, all that he had gone through in his life. I, I, I want to take a look at what he went through in his life because I want us to understand this horrible pit that he was singing about. So a few things that we should remember about David, a few things that come to mind when we think about David is that David, first off, he was a warrior from the time that he was considered ruddy, ruddy meaning that he was youthful. Let us remember that he was just a shepherd boy when he went up against Goliath. David wasn't no grown man. He was just a shepherd boy. If you don't remember, David, Saul tried to give David some armor, but again, he was so ruddy just again, being a shepherd boy, he couldn't even wear the armor that Saul gave to him. He couldn't wear it. He couldn't move it. He said, no, I got to take this stuff off. Again, a warrior on the battlefield from the days of his youth. As he grew up being a warrior, he had to deal with the Philistines. But David, he didn't just have to deal with the Philistines. He had to deal with another adversary. And this adversary, he despised David with every fiber in his bones. See, Saul, he, 
He despised David so greatly. Yes, King Saul, the one that tried to give David his armor. He despised, he began to despise David again so greatly that every way, everywhere he turned, he sought to kill David. He couldn't get killing David off of his mind. Saul's threat against David, it was so great that David eventually had to flee him. David had to eventually live on the run from Saul until the day that Saul died. A horrible pit, David said, that, that he was once in. Now, none of us can forget about David's great sin with Bathsheba, can we? No, that's what a lot of us, we think about the first, that's the first thing that a lot of us think about when we think about David, don't we? About his great sin with Bathsheba, how it led to the death of Uriah the Hittite. You see, that was a great consequence that David suffered due to his sin of lust, wasn't there? The first son born through, through him and Bathsheba died before they could even give that son a name. Then down the line, Absalom, another son of David, he eventually raised himself up against David in treason. David, he again was forced to flee Jerusalem because of Absalom's treason. Eventually, Absalom was killed in battle against David's own orders. And, and the death of Absalom, it sent David into to a spiral. As scripture shows us that he was in deep mourning about his, his son Absalom, who he actually loved. Again, a horrible pit of miry clay. David, again, he had seen some things in his life. He had gone through some things in his life. And whether you realize it or not today, again, you are on a battlefield today. And, and I want you to understand this. You are on a battlefield that's in a pit of miry clay. You see, as I said to you last Sunday, again, I said to you today, you have gone through some things in your life. We have all gone through some things in our life. We have all seen some things in our life, haven't we? All of us, we are going through something today. All of us, we are seeing some things today. Some we try to keep to ourselves because we don't want to bother others with what we are going through, with what we are dealing with. Again, we are on a battlefield today of miry clay. David, he faced Goliath, right? I tell you today that all of us, we have the Goliaths that we face in our life, don't we? See, for me, one of my Goliaths was, was through my kidneys failing me. And though I have received a transplant, I still tell you today that I still suffer with having my kidneys failed at one point in time. You know, every now and then I have to go down to the hospital. I have to get out of the bed at 540, go down and do labs. You know, think about how I'm dreading having to go and do that again this week. I'm thankful for being able to do it. I'm thankful for my transplant. Don't get me wrong. But that was a Goliath that I faced in my life. All of us have our Goliaths that we face on a daily basis. I don't know what your Goliath is today, but I, I'm certain that you're facing something today. I'm certain that you're going through something today. David, he had to deal with Saul. You better believe today that you have your own Saul's that, that you have to deal with. All of us do. All of us, we, we have somebody out there that despises us so greatly that they seek to bring us down. They seek to destroy us. They seek to bring the, the worst out of us. They antagonize us every step of the way. Every now and then, they may give it a rest, but like an annoying gnat, they come right back. How do you deal with your saws today? 
again, you're on a battlefield of Mary Clay. Today's generation, it's a generation that is quick to give its souls exactly what their souls desire. What do I mean by that? Today's generation is a generation that its enemy will answer with hate, and then today's generation will respond in hate and kind. We answer hate with hate today. And then after we have responded in such a manner, we are left with the guilt of our response, which oftentimes ends with us doing something that wasn't right, doing something that was wrong because we moved out of anger, we moved out of wrath, we moved out of malice. And again, as I said last week, no good can come from doing that. So again, today's generation is a generation that is left with the guilt of doing that. Some will either shrug it off, it's not a big deal for them, while the rest of us, we are left to sit with it. And many of us, we struggle when we have done somebody wrong, don't we? David, again, he had his great sin with Bathsheba, which was the result of him giving in to lust, the result of him giving in to temptation. I say to you today, none of us are perfect. I'm not perfect. None of us are perfect today. Sin, it tempts us. It tempts all of us. It does it on a daily basis. And there are several times where we surrender, where we surrender to temptation, to where we surrender to lust, to where we surrender to sin. Many in today's generation will shrug off that they gave in to sin. Sin is not a big deal for many in today's generation. Whereas again, the rest of us, the weight of our sin, it can absolutely crush us if we allow it. Again, a battlefield is what we are on, a battlefield of Maori clay. How do you deal with your sin, I wonder, today? Now, though he was once again in a horrible pit of Maori clay there, again, we see in my key verses for today, we see a David that was rejoicing, don't we? We see a David that was singing praises of thanksgiving. You see, David, he was singing praises because David said there that he had overcome the horrible pit of miry clay. David wasn't saying that he was stuck in that pit there. David was saying that he overcame that pit. He persevered. So the question that, that, that has to be answered today is, how did he do it? How did David persevere on the battlefield? Did he do it by his own strength? Did David do it by his own power? Did David do it by his own might? Nope. He didn't do it by his own strength. He didn't persevere by his own power. He didn't persevere by his own might. And David, he was a strong man. David, he tells us there again in my key verse there, David, he said there that he cried out to who? He cried out to who? Just making sure I got it right. Andrew, you're just staring at me. Y'all just looking down. I want to make sure that I'm reading the same thing that y'all reading there. Mm -hmm. David said that he cried out to the Lord, that he then also waited patiently on him as well. Then David said that God lifted him out of that horrible pit. David said there that God then set his feet on solid ground. David there, he is singing praises to God because God was the reason that he persevered. Not he himself, not his own strength, not his own power, not his own might, Again, David said that it was the Lord that lifted him out of that horrible pit. It was God, in other words, that helped him on the battlefield. I ask all of you today, do you desire to get off the battlefield today? Do you desire to have victory on the battlefield today? Do you desire to persevere? Do you desire to overcome the battlefield today? Now, 
Now, some, believe it or not, love being in a horrible pit of miry clay. They frolic around in it. They dance around in it. They splash around in it. They don't bother trying to get out of that horrible pit. I don't know about all of you today, but I would want out of the horrible pit. You see, life throws a lot at us. We take some body blows, don't we? We take some knockout shots, don't we? We get knocked down on this battlefield. But again, the question that, that must be answered today is will you get back up? That is the key. Whether or not you will get back up on this battlefield, or will you just stay down on the battlefield? See, try as hard as you can to climb up out of the pit on your own. I tell you today that all you will do is just slip and slide right back down into the pit. The reason why I say that to you today is because I want you to understand that you need help on this battlefield. You need help today to get out of the pit. Your old power, your old strength, your old might will simply not be enough for you to get out of the pit. Do you know where your help will come from on this battlefield? Do you know the help that you need in order for you to, to get out of that horrible pit of miry clay? If you do not know, let's take a look at some steps that, that you can take today so that you can persevere, so that you can persevere when the going gets tough, so that you can overcome, so that you can have victory when the going gets tough. Now, in last week's message, we saw that in order for us to take control of our thoughts, our emotions, and our actions, we saw that we must learn to be patient with the Lord, didn't we? This week, I tell you that patience is once again a key to persevering on this battlefield. Again, patience here. Write that down somewhere. Patience. Let's notice there in the fourth verse that David, he said, Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust. Again, David said, blessed is the man who makes, who makes God his trust. Trusting in the Lord, that requires you to patiently, listen to this, it requires you to patiently wait on his providence. It requires for you to patiently wait on his deliverance. Again, patience there. Do you trust God today? Do you have the patience to trust God today? Isaiah said in the 30th chapter of Isaiah in the 18th verse, Isaiah said that the Lord is a God of justice and those who wait on him, those who wait on God, they are the ones that are blessed. They are made happy in their soul. Patience. Waiting on the Lord. If you wait on God, you will be blessed. Problem though. As I said last week, today's generation is a generation that lacks patience. We are a people that lacks patience. We are a people that, that are always in a rush. And I asked the question last week, where are you in a rush to? Where are you trying to get to? Rather than waiting on God's help, today's generation is a generation that gets out ahead of him. But where again are you going? We are in a rush today to nowhere and to nowhere fast. Many people believe that they're going to get their blessing Many people, they, they rush off for, for their blessing, but for them, their blessing again is the riches that are of this world. 
In such a rush, I have found it often ends up in nothing but heartache, in nothing but pain, in nothing but sorrow, a lack of happiness. Because again, as Solomon said, trying to gain the riches of this world is like trying to grasp for the wind. You just keep hugging that air. You can't grab it. You can't grab a hold of it. So I'm not going to like to hear that because some going to say, Pastor, you saying that I can't be blessed. I don't view the riches of this world as a blessing. We end up in nothing but trouble when, again, we aren't patiently waiting on the Lord when we get out ahead of him. Again, I say to you today that one must learn to wait on God. We are a generation that needs to learn to wait on the Lord today. Will you wait on God today? See, waiting patiently on the Lord, that should not be confused with sitting down and doing nothing. Patience, I want you to understand today, patience is actually getting up and moving. But there's a certain way that you should be moving in that patience. You see, when you are moving in patience in God there, you are putting your complete trust in him. You are moving with complete trust in the Lord today. You're trusting again in his providence. You're trusting again in his deliverance when the going gets tough. As James pointed out, such trust will be built up over time through your trials and through your tribulations. Again, yes, you are going to have trials. Yes, you're going to have tribulations. Yes, you're going to have afflictions. Yes, you're going to have infirmities. I can't hide that from you because the Lord did not hide that from us. As Jesus said himself, in the world you will have tribulation. However, Jesus said in the 16th chapter of John's gospel in the 33rd verse, if you want to see it for yourself, Jesus added on that we should be of good cheer. The reason why we should be of good cheer is because he has overcome the world. When the going gets tough, you should be of good cheer. Uh oh, are you of good cheer when the going gets tough? In those difficult days, are you of good cheer? You see, David, he rejoiced because he learned to wait on the Lord. That's what he tells us there in my key verse. And because he learned to wait on God, David, he realized how wonderful God's works are. He realized how innumerable God's thoughts are. We see it there in the fifth and the sixth verse there. It's such a revelation, I tell you today, when you are able to, to realize how wonderful God's works are, when you realize how innumerable his thoughts have to be towards us, because again, we aren't mindless zombies. We have many, many, many choices that we can make in, in life, many directions in which we can go in. And God, he knows every single one of them in order to bless us. So his thoughts, they have to be innumerable. Such a revelation that can only come through patient observation. It can only come through patient observation through all that you go through, through your trials and through your tribulations. Have you realized how good God is? If God is a good guy, say he's a good God for me today. You see, David, he learned what we must learn, what we must believe in today. If God did it once, he'll do it what? If he did it once, he'll do it what? Do you believe it today? Yeah. See, such patience that builds up to a faith that Paul said is grounded and steadfast. Paul said it cannot be moved from the hope of the gospel. The hope of the gospel is Christ, our deliverer. Christ, he is the rock of our salvation. Christ is the rock of courage that, that all of us, we should be standing firmly on today. Are you standing on that solid rock of Christ? You see, when you stand on the solid rock of Christ, 
no matter how difficult things may get, Christ, he will not crumble. He's a rock that will not roll. He can stand up to the strongest storms that you face in your life. When you stand on him, you will persevere. Do you believe it today? I believe it today. Because again, he has done it for me once. He has brought me through once. He has brought me a mighty long way. However much longer I have in this life that I live, I know that he will do it again. Do you believe that he will do it again? Perseverance. Now, if you continue to push forward by such faith, you will eventually experience a change in your thoughts, a change in your heart, a change in your mindset. Your endurance will grow stronger and stronger. I tell you today that as your endurance grows stronger and stronger, you will be building up your willpower to be able to endure. Being able to persevere today, I would tell you, being able to persevere when the going gets tough, it also relies on having the sheer will to endure. Do you understand what I mean by that? Having the sure will to endure. Do you have that today? Do you have the willpower to persevere when the going gets tough? I want to remind you of something that Paul said to Timothy in his second letter to Timothy. If you take a look at 2 Timothy, the first chapter and the seventh verse, you see that Paul, he said to Timothy something very familiar that all of us have heard before. He said to Timothy that God has not given any of us a spirit of fear. God hasn't given you a spirit of fear. God has given us a spirit of power, a spirit of love, that which is a sound mind. Not a mind of unrest. A mind that is of peace. Peace of mind. I've said that before in this series, right? But again, I worry about the mindset of today's generation. And the reason why that is, is because it is a generation that is constantly fed fear. There's a whole bunch of fear mongering that goes on in our society today. One man is standing up and shouting about, hey, hey, something to happen. Something terrible is going to happen. Many are living in great fear today because of a special few. But a spirit of fear, I want you to understand today that a spirit of fear is a spirit that seeks to create doubt. Y'all hear me say that all the time. You hear me say it all the time that if you allow it, that doubt, it can paralyze you in your soul. It can paralyze you from, from moving in faith. Therefore, the spirit of fear can become, as you have heard me say before as well, it can become a spirit of defeat. It has lost the willpower to push forward. What do you suppose will happen when the going gets tough and you don't have the willpower to push forward? I tell you today that that's the spirit that's simply waiting to be consumed by the pit. It is waiting to die on the battlefield. God, I want you to understand today, he hasn't given you a spirit that's dead. He has woken us up. He has quickened us, as scripture says. He has made us alive through his only begotten son, our hope. This is why those souls that are in grief and in sorrow and in deep depression today, this is why they must be constantly encouraged to move. This is why those with the spirit of doubt today, this is why they need much encouragement to move. Because again, on this battlefield, the adversary wants you to give up. I don't want you to give up today. God does not want you to give up today. He wants you to persevere. 
So we need that word of encouragement. That word of encouragement today, you must remember, is that you can do all things through Christ. Do you believe it today? Do you believe that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens In all your trials and your tribulations, I tell you today that you are not alone on this battlefield. Christ, you should understand, he's right there by your side. He hasn't left you. He's not going to forsake you. He is there to lend you his strength. He is there to lend you his power. All that you need to be able to persevere, to have the willpower to keep on pushing when the going gets tough. The devil, our adversary, Satan, he will do his very best to make you doubt that God is with you. He will do his very best to make you to doubt that God is moving for you. But again, I tell you today that you need to remember that God, he is always by your side. And if he's not by your side, he's in front of you, setting the course making the path, that narrow path, making it clear for us today. Do you believe it today? God being with you today is the power that you need. It is the will power that you need today to keep willing yourself forward. When the bills keep stacking up, when the money is getting short, when, when your health may not be in the best of shape. God, again, will make a way. I believe that today. He will bring you through all of your trials and through all of your tribulations. Let's notice there in the 11 verse there that David, he prayed to God. He's prayed to God, do not withhold your tender mercies from me. Again, he was talking about being on a battlefield. He prayed, let your loving kindness and your truth David said, continually preserve me, keep me. Do you understand why David was, was making such a prayer there? Is that your prayer today for the Lord's loving kindness and his truth to continually preserve you? Do you desire to, to have victory over this battlefield? Do you desire to get out of that horrible pit? A big part of the battles that we face today is just like David's, our sin. No, we may have not had a sin with Bathsheba, but we have sin, don't we? And as I said before, the guilt of David's sin, it nearly crushed him. When we take a look at the 12th verse there, David, he even said it himself, that he had been surrounded by innumerable evils, wickedness, sin, his iniquities, David said there in the 12th verse, had even overtaken him to the point that he couldn't lift up his head. Have you ever been overtaken to the point in your sin that you felt like you couldn't even lift up your eyes to the Lord? I didn't get nothing there. I have had such shame before, even to this day, even right now. I don't know about y'all. David, he felt that his iniquities, that they were so great that he felt that it's hard, he said that in the tough verse, that it began to fail him. Have you ever felt like your sin was just a heavy weight on your soul? That it was weighing down on your heart, like you could feel like you was having heart troubles. You talk about your blood pressure, you feel like your blood pressure was going up. Feeling that, that anxiety, that stress all over what you had did. So not to suffer defeat to his sin, David, he prayed. He had to. He had to pray. David felt like he had to pray. Do you feel like you have to pray today on this battlefield? There go prayer again. Oh, boy. Prayer key, ain't it? David, over in the 51st Psalm, David, he prayed for the Lord to restore the, the joy of his salvation. And David, he said here in the 40th Psalm that, that the Lord inclined his ear, listened to him, David said there, and lifted him out of the pit. Do you believe God will lift you out of the pit? The pit of sin that you're in today, the pit of your own doings, your transgressions, your disobedience. 
Do you believe that the Lord will incline his ear to you and lift you out? Not hold your sin against you? The guilt of our wrongdoing, again, it can weigh so heavily on our soul today. So much so that it can become hard for us to move. It can become hard for us to even breathe. For us to overcome our sin and be lifted up, I tell you today that we need God's grace and mercy. You see, God, he is both faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He, again, he is both faithful and just to lift us up. If we make our confessions known to him, he will lift us up out of the horrible pit of Mary Clay and he will set our feet on solid ground. Do you believe it today? Jesus, he has made it very clear that that when we are heavy laden in our soul, that we can persevere. Jesus said all we need to do is go to him. Will you go to God today? I tell you today that if you go to God, God's grace and mercy, it can bring you through. God's grace and mercy can help you persevere. Again, should you believe in him? But again, the question for today's generation is whether or not today's generation will believe in him. Will you have complete trust in the Lord? Will you have trust that he will help you persevere on this battlefield? Do you have trust, complete trust, that he will lift you up out of that horrible pit of miry clay and set your feet on solid ground? You see, I share with you today what I have learned in my life. And it stands in agreement with what David has shared with us here today. If you turn over and you take a look at the 121st Psalm. In the 121st Psalm, David said in the first two verses there, he said that when he looked to the hills, he didn't have to question where his help came from. David said that he knew that his help was coming from the Lord. Do you know your help is coming from God today? You see, I share with you today that I know that my help, it comes from the Lord because I prayed and he inclined his ear to me. And again, he has been with me on this battlefield and I am steadily climbing out of the horrible pit of miry clay. God, he has helped me. There in the third verse, David said that, that the Lord would not allow one's foot to be moved. On this battlefield, God will not allow you to stumble on this battlefield. He won't allow you to stay down on the ground on the battlefield. I think of when my dad passed away and just how impossible it seemed for me to move forward. I was worried about me, my mom and my brother, how we will move forward when he passed away. It rocked my life. I honestly didn't think. I, nor my mama, my brother, my sister, my niece, my nephew, I honestly didn't think that we would make it. But here we are 13 years later. Still making it. Still persevering on this battlefield when the devil is trying to defeat me. When he's trying to defeat us. You don't have the victory, do you, devil? I think about when my kidneys failed and how impossible a day like today seemed. But today is possible. Still not having that victory, are you, devil? David, he said there in the fifth, uh, the fifth verse there in the 121st Psalm that God, he said, God is your keeper. You better believe that I agree with him on that. He is your keeper today. God, he did not let my faith be moved away from him when the going got tough for me. Because again, the Lord, he kept me, shielded and protected me. I want you to understand today where many in today's generation have given up on God. God, I tell you today, he's the best shield that you can ever find. God, I tell you today that he's the best protection that you will ever have. God, he is the best provider that you'll ever have. He is the best deliverer that you'll ever find on this battlefield. I don't need to turn to something else. 
I don't need to turn to some other kind of power when I have the almighty one fighting my battles for me. Delivering all that I go over in my hands. All of my trials and my tribulations and my afflictions, God, he's delivering them into my hands, which means that my victory is assured. It is guaranteed today. And again, that's not just for me. That's for all of you as well today. So again, if you desire to persevere in whatever it is that you are going through today, again, I tell you that if you have not turned to the Lord, turn to him. I encourage you to do so. Be patient with the Lord and learn to have complete trust in him and in his word. Have complete trust in his work as well. And as David said there in the seventh and the eighth verse, I will close out on today in agreement. The Lord, he shall preserve you. He shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out. He shall preserve your coming in as well from this time forth and even forevermore. Do you believe that? Amen. 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 Thanks for watching this week's sermon. I hope that you enjoyed this week's message and I hope that you'll share it with someone somewhere. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you like this video, follow the channel as well as hit the alert bell so that you don't miss any notifications, so that you don't miss any of the wonderful videos that we share here on the Newfound Faith YouTube channel.